Welcome to the show. I'm Ryan Gomez. And I drafted Conspiracy last week. You sure did. In case you missed it, we had an in-house Conspiracy Take the Crown draft right here at the TCG Player offices. John was one of eight lucky participants here who got to experience Conspiracy hands-on, one of the first people uh, here in the company. So, John, what did you think? Uh, okay, it was super fun. It was not really like anything I've ever... Like, it's not like any draft experience I've ever had, ever. Um... Let's see. Let me. I'll try and walk you through it. Um, pack one, pick one. It was a far bog bone flinger. Yep. Uh, so it was five drop that gives minus two, minus two out of a bunch of other bad cards. And from there, got past to dismiss a card that I like a lot, and figured I'll go a little blue black control because uh, the blue commons I identified as being really strong, sure. and I think backed up by a lot of one for one removal, maybe a lot of card advantage, like dismiss is kind of card advantage. Yep. You've got divination, farbog blown, bone flingers kind of card advantage. So you know, I figured a one for one removal is not really great, but uh, if I can couple it with some of the blue card advantage stuff, it would it would be good. Okay, so then I saw you pick up a conspiracy there. Uh, pack like, yeah, yeah, pack three. I I open my pack and I just take a rare. I take a Harvester of Souls. I think a uh, pretty unimpressive card, but you know, in your I, colors at least. It's fun. in my colors and it's rare. And I figure fine, I'll take a big old rare. And then I get past Sovereign's Realm, which um. Not an ideal card to get kind of in the third pack, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, when you when you have a Sovereign's Realm, you want to, like, draft around it a little bit. You want to just be taking the best card out of every pack, and that's not what I did for the first two packs. But I was able to kind of do that in pack three, and, um, I mean, I thought my deck was awesome. I tweeted it. I, I thought it turned out super cool, at least. Okay, so you felt good going into the game itself. And I then did. What what happened within the game there? What did we see? Immediately, uh, Mike Egolf. <laughs> he so Mike Egolf's a name you might recognize. He top forward a uh, SCG Open last summer. He's a good player, one of the best in the office, and he had <laughs> his deck was great. So he had a bunch of zero fours and one threes, and he had the conspiracy the. The door on the siege tower conspiracy. Weight advantage, which lets yeah. his creatures deal damage equal to their toughness rather than power. So. It, his deck was so good, and it had us on the back foot immediately. Like he was missing go triggers, but it didn't matter. Like his, he was playing four fours for two, so we were all on the back foot immediately. I had, um, I got to start with Goblin Tunneler, which. Is really good if you're trying to like steal monarchy from things, mm -hmm. and I stole monarchy a bunch of times. When you're the monarch, you kind of tend to stay the monarch, and that advantage really snowballs into a position where it's really hard for you to lose. And that is uh, kind of where we were at with Egolf for a while. But um, what ended up happening in the game was like I, I thought it mattered to consistently go after the monarchy to try and get it. Yeah, and so I was at three. <laughs> <laughs> and um, an alley untapped with a Sangromancer in play. And she she asked me what my life is, just to be sure. And I say, I'm a three. Sangromancer is a three, three flyer, and I have no flying. And I try to argue my case to her that, hey, you might want to keep me alive because Egolf is the enemy here. We've got to go after him because we're just all going to lose to his crazy, crazy deck. And she weighed her options and then attacked me dead. <laughs> Um, so what ended up happening, she, I talked, I got a chance to talk to her after the game and she goes, you have that conspiracy. She was the one that passed me the conspiracy, by the way. I don't think she read it during the draft, but she definitely got to see it firsthand and she was like really worried about my deck mm. because she thought if I got enough time, I would never, I would never draw land again. I would be drawing really good cards over, uh, any color basically I wanted so she was really worried about that and she wanted to take me out which I mean I can't really I can't really argue with her because eventually out of drawn a Sangromancer of my own gained a lot of life back and eventually been able to you know, kind of dispatch everyone with these. So I can't really argue with her strategy. Of course not, because ultimately she ended up winning that whole game, She right? won. So what happened? <laughs> she, she's only been playing Magic about three weeks. Yeah, she, and she you are the one that teaches her during I lunch. Her, yes. I, we eat lunch in the same kind of communal space, and I get to see Ryan teach Allie how to play, and that's... It was nice to see her win. She she was exhausted afterwards, though. It was pretty great. <laughs> she was like, I don't know if I want to do that again. 
<laughs> which is kind of awesome. Um, so what ended up happening after I died, um, Mike stayed the monarch basically the whole game and drew a ton of cards, but really couldn't make any headway because his deck was pretty light on threats, and Allie had a ton of huge creatures and a lot of removal. Somehow her and I were in black next to each other, and we both had a lot of removal, but... I, I, she just had so much. And um, so what eventually ended up happening was E-Golf played the, um, what's the... What's the time walk one? Oh, yeah. The, the one that gives you the time walk. It's a blue mythic, and basically he played it with about six cards left in his library, and... <laughs> decided he was just going to take a bunch of turns and everyone gave him a bunch of turns because it his deck was his deck was very reactive and he had no way to pivot he had no way to go proactive his deck had a bunch of couldn't capitalize on those extra turns yeah he had a bunch of neck snaps in his deck and that doesn't work when people aren't attacking you and you have to kind of <laughs> go into i need to win mode so uh, yeah he um, he was the next one out and from there, um, Allie was able to kind of lean on Bobby till he just kind of crumbled. Wow, awesome. It was great. Good stuff. All right, cool. So we also checked in with some of the other players from this event. Let's take a look at what they had to say about their experience playing Conspiracy Take the Crown. Yeah. Uh, I drafted blue-white defenders. Uh, my deck was quick and fast, very aggressive. The idea was basically to just maintain the monarchy as long as possible. How does it feel, your lordship? It feels fantastic. Finally have the monarchy. I played a green-blue flash control yeah. pile. Uh, deck actually did surprisingly well. The protector of the crown was my MVP. Use reach to, to block anything that was coming at me, make more tokens. Yeah, oh, and you know, yeah, she put that on it. Like, it uh, I think it was much better suited for 1v1 games. She regicide that she played, which really killed all of my giant creatures. I combined it with the Adriana's Valor. I didn't, didn't get a flying creature, but my next card would have been Plummet. Um, I won basically with gratuitous violence, teaming up with Renzo's Ruffian, so I got the double double, which does two times the two times the damage. To pump up, get big, and try to win. So right now it's looking like 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I became the monarch. Which gets doubled by gratuitous violence, so we're looking at 44 damage. I don't know how it became too heavy, and I may have accidentally decked myself. Yeah. All right, well, that's it for our uh, kind of strategy recap here of Woo! Conspiracy Take the Crown. It's been an amazing event. John, any parting thoughts that you can pass on, maybe some wisdom to the, the players out there looking to get their hands on Conspiracy? Oh, man. Um, let's see. Uh, Monarchy's obviously really good, but you need a board. Uh, removal is actually... I know I talked during the reviews about how removal's not that great. It's really not that great. Building up your board is so much better than just having a one-for-one -one removal spell. So focus on cards that affect the board in a way that, like, they kind of give you a wall. Um, I mean, removal obviously affects the board, but it, they're just not as good as creatures are. Um, the black death touch guy that gives you the monarchy... Um, uh, of the Black Rose, something like that. I don't remember the names very well. But that guy is incredible. He's really good. Um, probably the best black common. Um, yeah, I, I really want to do it again. So I hope um, some people around the office end up getting more boxes because it was awesome. Sure we will. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. We hope you guys enjoy Conspiracy Take the Crown yourselves. And we'll see you in a couple weeks when Kaladesh starts warming up. So oh, I can't wait. It should be exciting. That's it. We'll see you. Bye, Internet.